Hello once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. This is another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I am your host, Darth Tuba. Be sure to check out, like, share my videos on YouTube. You can subscribe to me at Darth Tuba Two Words, Twitter at Darth Tuba, and I have a Star Wars or Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook. You can also email me at Darth Tuba77 at gmail.com. So, continuing our seemingly never-ending Rogue One kick, we have now two items that we're going to open up from the Disney store. We have opened up some ones like this. This is the Elite Series, okay? This is the Elite Series die-cast figures, and uh, they're really cool, so we're going to open up a Bodhi Rook today. And then after that, we're going to check out the Elite Series, but the larger cut size, which are not metal. They are just basically standard, like, 10-inch... Um, uh, action figures, some would call them dolls, uh, or Synchronic that we're going to open up. So I'm um, really excited to get to both of these, but especially this one because I have not yet opened up any of their um, larger uh, Elite Series figures. These figures are available in all, all Disney stores throughout the country and world, as well as the uh, parks, the Disney parks. And um, they have a nice box design. Um, they're really good. They are weighty, a little heavy. So... Um, uh, they're very similar in size to the Black Series uh, six-inch figures, but they are a little bit bigger. All right, so they don't. Some people like to mix and match. I kind of do. You know, it's you know when I'm just putting them on on display. So um, the one thing though that these figures are notorious for is uh, being very difficult to take out of the package because of these really, really, really challenging um, twist ties that I actually need a pair of needle nose pliers to, to do. But the thing is, if you are taking these out, be really careful because the figures are metal and being metal, the paint does not adhere to them as well as it might had if they were plastic. So you have to be careful. But I find that if you just get a little bit of headway on them and just start twisting, eventually you'll, I mean, I suppose you could, um, get a pair of scissors and try to cut them, but I've tried that and it can be a little bit challenging and daunting. So this is kind of where we go with it. Um, we'll see how long this takes. I might end up skipping through the video just to kind of save time because I do want to get to that other one. Yeah, it's just, yeah, there is just a serious, there is somebody in the Disney company that just doesn't want people to open these up. I think they're making them very, 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 very difficult to open. I think maybe, who knows, maybe they're thinking more along the lines of this is really meant really just for collectors and the kids aren't going to want to play with these. And maybe they're right. I don't know. Um, you know, my daughter, uh, well, she was never really into the toys um, that much. I mean, she, uh, she liked the Star Wars films and uh, she's an artist now, so she always draws me a, a Star Wars picture, even now, in, you know, in, in her 20s, she'll draw me a nice Star Wars picture uh, for my birthday or for Christmas or whatnot. But um, but as far as the collecting was concerned, that was never really her thing. Um, for a while, she was enjoying my Ewoks from the Return of the Jedi days. Um, so I used to, like, just, I was never one to say, I was never one of those, you know, 20, 30-something collectors that didn't let their kids play with the toys. I said, nope, you can play. With. Here's a bin. Fill it with whatever toys you want to play with, and you can have fun. And she did. She filled it with Ewoks. She took the, the Ewok playset and all of the Ewoks that she could find, new and old, put them all together. And she put them and played with them, set them up, and did all sorts of adventures with them, which I thought was really cool. You know, I said, I really enjoyed it. Didn't bother me, you know. I mean, most of my figures were, whoops, excuse me, most of my figures were out of the package anyway, so it wasn't as though she was uh, doing any more damage to them, you know, no more than I did, so it's okay. So any parents out there, don't be afraid to let your kids play with these toys, especially if you're buying new toys, because the new toys, I'm telling you right now, none of them are going to be, they are so mass produced that they are not going to be um, worth the same thing that the original vintage was, no matter how... Even, even the rare ones aren't going to be worth that much. So just be aware of that. Don't be too concerned with it. Um, a lot of, as I mentioned in previous episodes, a lot of um, uh, collectors 
Um, don't like the fact that on the back of the figure you can see, it's hard for me to make up from there, but there's actually like Phillips head screws, you know, bolted in the backs of the figures. And there's even some more that I think have been covered up, but, you know, still, it's not something, uh, I don't, I don't have much issue with that. I mean, I understand technology is such that you have to do certain things to make the figures work. All right, so take this. We have his little goggles. Let's see about putting his goggles on. It's a signature thing. His Bodhi root goggles. Oh, we're actually, you don't put them on. You put them on like over his head. There we go. Yeah, we have the plans. We have the plans. But we need to beat them up. I think his. Spoiler alert. I think that his um, his his demise, his unfortunate demise, was the saddest. Him and K2SO. I don't know why. I mean, they all they all had their moment, but you know, like you figure, at least Cassian and and uh, Jin, at least they had, um, you know, they they had known they succeeded in the mission, so they can take comfort in that as they were being engulfed. But poor Bodhi, you know, he was just in the middle of the thick of it, trying to do good, and then silly shore trooper throws a bomb in and blows up his ship. But anyway, so there you go. There's Bodhi Rook. Comes with uh, the little backpack. I don't even know what that was. I mean, I guess it was a big cable, right? I wish we had stuff like that because when you have to carry a big cable, you just have to carry them on your arm. I kind of like the backpack cable carrier. I think that's something that we should see uh, more happening with. And, you know, you can't really, you don't really pick it out, but he is wearing an Imperial... Um, TIE Fighter pilot jumpsuit. It's just that when you see a TIE Fighter pilot, they got all the accoutrements and everything, everything else built down into it, so you don't really notice it. But he has a little cog on the side there, so you know. Anyway, so there is Bodhi Rook. Okay? And now we come to this one. Okay? Now we have the Orson Krennic figure. Um, I'm going to just read what they say here. Uh, in collaboration with Lucasfilm, Disney Store is proud to introduce the Star Wars Elite series, a premium line of toys featuring iconic characters from the expansive world of Star Wars. This exclusive collection is meticulously engineered and crafted with Star Wars fans in mind. As director within the, within the Advanced Weapons Research Division of Imperial Intelligence, Orson Krennic is obsessed with the completion of the long-delayed Death Star project. A cruel but brilliant man, Krennic has stalked his rep... has stalked... excuse me, stalked. He did kind of stalk Galen Erso a little bit when you think about it, but let me correct that. Krennic has staked his reputation on the delivery of the functional battle station to the Emperor. So, um, pretty cool, all right? I'm kind of surprised at it, to be honest with you, because I didn't think that... I usually think thought that Hasbro and Lucasfilm and everybody, they, they kind of... Lucasfilm used to set up their licenses to only go to one group. So only one group could make action figures. Only another group could do this, another group could do that. But I think since the acquisition of Disney purchasing Lucasfilm, they've kind of, um, shall we say, gone a little lax on that, you know? And um, it's been different things. So it's kind of cool to see. It is a slightly different size figure than... I mean, you got to understand, too, that, you know, the history of the 12-inch figure line has been very up and down, okay? You started off with the 12-inch line that came out in 1977, or 78, rather, and it was just... A handful, you know, a dozen or so figures. Uh, they started coming up with a couple for Empire, Boba Fett, IG-88, but then they didn't continue it. I'm not sure why. I'm sure you can find information as to why that is. Uh, when they started rebooting the franchise and started to reboot the figuring, figuring, figure collections in the uh, 1994, 95, Shortly after they came out with the small three and a quarter, three and three quarter inch line, they did start coming out with a twelve inch line that were, you know, fairly detailed, more detailed than the original, and they were great, and they lasted all the way through um, and after um, the Revenge of the Sith. However, then sideshow collectibles uh, started creating really high end collectible dolls, and therefore, then Hasbro kind of faded away from it. They just kind of stopped doing it. Only later to come back and do it as just very, almost they went back to the original, 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 you know, like the 1978 figures, which were just five points of articulation, real basic. Which I think they've had some success with because they seem to keep 
making more and more and more of them. But then it goes weirder than that because Sideshow then gets involved with this other company, Hot Toys. I'm not sure if they partnered with them or purchased them or acquired, whatever. But now Hot Toys making really fine, 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 detailed figures. We thought Sideshow did a good job, but then uh, Hot Toys did that. And then you have Gentle Giant, which, what did they do? They took all the original, original, original um, classic Kenner action figures and blew them up to 12 inches. And, of course, they're awesome. You know, I didn't think they were going to be awesome, but then when I got, my, I got one and it was awesome, so now I pretty much collect them all. So that, you know, it's just an amazing thing to see. And now they're, of course, delving into other things like G.I. Joe figures and Superpowers collection and all the other, you know, hot, in, hot properties from the late 70s, early 80s. So then on top of all that, then Disney comes around and does this elite figure with the, with the six and a half, seven, eight inch line, as well as the, not 12 inch, but 10 inch line. So some pretty cool stuff. And I got to say that, uh, you know, I, I, lo I love the different varieties. And, and again, once you've made the decision, you know, it's so funny, when you make the call as a collector, that you're no longer going to be a completist. Now, of course, a completist, no one can be a completist. Not even the great and powerful Oz himself, Steve Sansweet with the Rancho Obi-Wan, can be a completist. He comes pretty darn close, but he can't actually succeed. It's just, it's impossible. There's just too much product, not enough money, and not enough room, you know? But what I mean, though, is that even in the sense of, like, one item, like, for example, there might be people that, like, for a while I was saying, I'm going to collect all of the... Hasbro action figures, all of them. I'm going to collect them all. Well, you know, it got it got annoying because there's so many exclusives and then there's Comic-Con exclusives and then they have repaints and repacks and variants and this and that and the other thing. And it just gets to the point where it's like, it's not fun anymore. It's just, as a collector, it's just not fun. You're just stressing over it. And not to mention the fact that you're spending lots of money and, you know, there are other things that have to happen, like bills need to be paid and college payments need to go through and mortgages have to be paid and, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a real world problem. So when you kind of learn the collector's, um, I guess you can say, it's almost like a Buddhist idea to let go. You know, don't, don't worry so much about it. Enjoy what you enjoy. Collect what you want to collect, but don't feel like you have to collect it all. When you do that, then all of a sudden things become more interesting. When, when Disney Elite Series comes out, oh, there's a couple of those I think I'd like to have. I don't have to have them all. There's a couple of other ones I'd like to have. I don't have to have them all. And, you know, the Pokemon gotta catch them all mantra doesn't really work here anymore. And it's probably a better thing. So collectors, especially young collectors, if you're thinking that, you know, when you get, you know, into, like, you're getting a disposable income and you want to start building up a collection of some sort, don't feel that you have to have something complete. Just collect what you want, all right? Don't feel like collect what you have to have. And I think if you do that, you'll find yourself in, you know, just enjoying the hobby a lot more. Okay, so what do we got here? This guy, okay, we looks like he's got some, uh, I have to do some surgery here to get rid of a few items here. Looks like, oh yeah, I see. He's got a, uh, yeah, I have to kind of go through and uh, I just got to be careful not to cut his coat. That would not be good. Cape. No capes. Like the court, the Orson Cape. I thought that was actually. I didn't. I didn't know how I felt about it when I was watching the previews, but but then after. Um, oops, excuse me. If there was a buzz there. I didn't. I, I don't know how I felt about it when I was watching the previews, but then after uh, watching the um, watching the movie, I thought, you know, that actually is really a cool a cool uh, part of him, and 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 it's kind of part of his character. You know, when you get to, especially after you've seen it for multiple viewings. You start to you really get inside the head of Orson Krennic and realize that, you know, he's not a, he's somebody who kind of clawed his way up. He's not somebody who was always in power, you know. He, he had to, he had to kind of fight and claw his way to the top. And that's why, you know, when you watch, uh, if, read the book Catalyst if you haven't. I've started reading it and you really get a, a great insight. I mean, look, as I said, I'm not, uh, as I said earlier, I'm not someone who, this guy is being very challenging. What is, it? what is with the cape? A little twist ties in it. You know, I'm not one to um, 
you know, to get too too wrapped up in the expanded universe. But I got to say that um, he is a deep deeper character than the movie can has time to let him go. Actually, this is a really nice piece. Let's put it this way. Now, there's a few more pieces here that come with it. Looks like an interesting type of articulation. I mean, it's similar to any 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 type of of doll or, or action figure type. He also comes with boy, I cannot tell you how important it is to have that exacto knife. All right, he's got a few more things here. Now I don't know how much of this we're going to be able to use. Okay, I'm just going to kind of keep it all there. Oh, I know what these are. Okay, I see. So essentially, he's come. You know, he comes with. Um, he's got his weapon. I'm trying to decide what these are. Oh, I see. There's just more tools for him, more more stuff to put in his belt. I don't know why they made that separate, but. Okay, whatever. And looks like these, these extra hands and extra gloves, or not, these extra gloves and extra, they're basically, they're basically wrists. And they're there to um, allow you to pose his hands in different ways. I'm going to leave the hands as they're posed. He has a, he has a holster with a gun. I'm going to leave it taped in there just because um, I think I'm going to keep him more posed. Very rarely do I see them using the gun. Um, he uses it, although there was a scene, I don't know if you've seen this, but there's actually a scene that he pulls the gun on the Death Star. He pulls the gun, which can only assume he's pulling the gun on Tarkin or on one of the other Imperials. It's kind of weird to think about that. But anyway, so he's got a pretty good articulation. I like this. It looks like he's got his toes are articulated. So <laughs> I guess if you wanted to, he could be... Oh my god, yeah, look at this. He could be down like this and his toe bends, which allows him a little bit even more. Sorry. It's a pretty cool articulation for a for a relatively inexpensive figure. It was about twenty bucks on sale, but um, you know, when you consider I don't the sideshow figures don't move around as as easily. They can move around like this, but they don't move around as easily. So Pretty cool. All right, so there's Bodhi Rook, and there's Orson Krennic. Okay, and that'll do it for today's episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. Again, please share. Get the word out. Okay, I know there are other people that would love to see what it is we're doing here. Um, again, I know there are other unboxing shows, and thank you for taking the time to watch this one. Um, you can subscribe on, the, on YouTube, Darth Tuba Two Words. You can check me out on Twitter, at Darth Tuba. You can follow me on uh, Facebook. Find me... It's Darth Tuba's Star Wars unboxing page, and you'll get information there. Right now, it's just basically photos and video clips of what we've been doing. But keep in mind, there might be other little surprises here and there. So, All right. So and if there's nothing else, man, I want to thank you all very much, and may the Force be with you.